Hey guys, it's Eugene here from Review Outdoor Gear and I have some awesome watches to show you today. Uh, these watches are the Luminox Bear Grylls series. It's a collaboration between Bear Grylls and Luminox to make some outdoor watches. We have two of them here. This is the Master series and then this one is the Land series. And they also have a C version of the watch that I don't have here. Both of these watches in full disclosure were sent to us by Luminox to review. And we have had them both. Vlad has been using this one here and I've been wearing this one for about six to eight months. Uh, I've almost been wearing my full time, so I've really gotten a good sense of what it's like, how it is on the hand, and uh, you know the functionality of it and the purpose uh, for which it's designed. And today I just wanna quickly go through some of the specs and then give you a good review of it. And uh, if you're interested in this watch, you know, definitely go check it out. Um, the prices are somewhere around about $800, $900 for this one here and about 600 or so dollars for this one here. So do check that out. Now, I'm gonna start with uh, the Master Series, although maybe first I'll cover some features that they both have in common. So they're both Swiss made. They both have the Ronda movements. This one has the 50-30 movement, 50-30 D movement. And this one has the 50-21 D movement. Now, um, the reason they're different is to have different complications. Both of these have Carbonox cases, which is a carbon material that's compressed that's six times lighter than steel, three times lighter than titanium, doesn't expand with heat, and uh, is very stable and, and scratch resistant. And the case backs on both of them are stainless steel. Now the difference here, one of the differences is this one has a sapphire crystal, this one has a hardened mineral crystal. They both have tritium loom, uh, as well as just some regular loom. You can see here the tritium tubes are all around this one on the each hour, all the way around and on the hands and as well as on the bezel that spins. This one just has them on the 12, 3, 6, and 9, as well as on the hour and minutes hands. They both have screw down crowns, which is really nice. They are both pretty water resistant. This one's 300 meters water resistant. This one is 200 meters water resistant. Now. I will say that they both come with a strap that's not on it currently. So they both come with these straps right here. Uh, this is just a rubber strap. And this one here is a paracord sort of strap, as you can see. And they both have uh, you know, the same buckle, which is a stainless steel buckle. Now, one of the downsides of these watches is these, uh, these straps were just horrible. I couldn't wear this one at all. It really irritated my hand. Maybe it's something to do with the rubber or it's just, it doesn't form to the hand very well. And so I didn't like it at all. Vlad didn't like this one either. It just was not comfortable at all. So we actually pretty quickly took these off and got some just regular old NATO double pass-through straps, which are just amazing. And I will put the links to these straps down in the description and you can check them out. So let me just take the strap off for you and show you what it's like. Uh, these are NATO straps and what's really nice about them and why they're much better than just a regular strap is that um, they actually keep the watch a lot safer in terms of if something breaks, it doesn't fall off your hand. And it's very easy to install. You don't ever have to take the pins out. So it just comes out like this. In this case, the little compass comes off. And then it just pulls right out like this. So it comes through that little slit. Now here's the deal. Imagine if this one broke and came off, the watch would still be on with this other one and it would not fall off. So you'd have to break both of the pins here to have the watch fall off your wrist, as opposed to just a regular strap where if one of these pins broke, you'd actually lose the watch. So that's what a NATO strap is, just so you know. And it, it, it wears very comfortably on the hand. In terms of the sizes of these watches, um, this one's 45 millimeters, and that's just not including these little uh, you know, lugs on the sides. So just from here to here, 45, this one's 44. If you include all the way out to the crown and to the side, it's about 55, as well as lug to lug is 55. So it's almost just a square kind of shape here. And the other measurement is the height, which is 14 millimeters on these watches. Now the backs of the watches look cool. Uh, basically they say never give up, Luminox, Swiss made, Bear Grylls, collaboration. So they're stainless steel, they're screw down, and uh, that's all there really is to it. And it has some information about the watch on the back, of course. 
one downside is that they are they are battery powered and they are quartz movements and not automatic. Would have been nice to have an automatic for this price, um, as well as it would have been really nice to have a crystal that's a sapphire on this one. For around six hundred dollars, I kind of expect a sapphire crystal. Uh, this one's about eight hundred, and it does have a sapphire crystal. But we'll get into that in a minute. Let me talk about some of the features of the watch. So here on the Master Series, we have a bezel that turns all the way around in once uh, one second increments. So there's basically 60 clicks. We have a little tritium loom up there to know where the 12 o'clock is, or basically the 360 degrees or the 60 second mark. And then tritium all the way on every hand, um, hour and hands here. We have the screw down crown, we have the date, and we have the seconds always running there on the right at the three o'clock. Now when you start the chronograph, the second hand begins to read the, chrono the, the seconds uh, for both watches. This little dial here on the left reads the minutes, and then this one down here starts to count the hours once the minutes pass. Now, it's very nice for seconds. It's a little bit more cumbersome for the minutes because depending on where the minute hand and hour hand are, they can actually cover that up and it's a little bit hard to read. And um, also, it only goes to 30 minutes. So if you're going for an hour, it's going to be two of those before the hour changes on the lower dial. So it's a little bit uncomfortable, meaning that um, it's not easy to read, you know, instantly, like with a glance. You have to kind of pay attention. Um, and I actually, initially, I was kind of wrong sometimes because I thought this was, was an hour, and I would misread the, the timer. So just be, uh, be cognizant of that. It's a little bit of a downside in terms of the layout. So this one has three here, and the date is on the bottom. And then the chronograph is stopped by the, by the button here, and then it's reset by this one, as you can tell there. And that's really all there is to it. Um, now this rotating bezel has, does have a little bit of give to it and wobble. It doesn't ever you know, rattle, but if I really grip it tight, and you can see I can move it around just a bit, up and down and side to side. Um, and I, part of that is always normal because of uh, the ratchet system inside. It has to have a little spring, but uh, just so you're aware of that, it has that there. Now, going to the Land Series, we don't have a rotating bezel. Uh, we do have still the same kind of screw down crown, both buttons, and the chronograph works very similarly, except that you only have a 30 minute timer here. And that's it, so if I start the chronograph, we're just going to be running minutes here, and then it's going to repeat, and it doesn't add up the hours. And then you can stop it, and then you can reset it. These buttons, um, they have a pretty good tactile response, uh, or tactile feedback to them. They kind of click a little bit. And then the screw down crown, I'll just show you there. It unscrews here, and then you can pop it out like that. It has two positions, one for the, one for the uh, date and one for the, for the time. So the way the walking pace scale works is you actually have to go outside first, and you can see here that the base is 164 feet. So you go outside and you measure how many steps it takes for you to walk 164 feet. And say, for example, it takes you 50, 50 steps to walk that distance. So like each step is about three feet or so. Once you know that number, say it's 50 for you, right? Then the way you would uh, measure your speed, your walking speed, is when you start walking, you would start the chronograph. So say you start walking now, and then you walk your 50 steps, in your case, if that is 50 steps for you. And then whenever you're done walking the 50 steps, you stop the chronograph. And then the seconds hand here would be pointing to your miles per hour speed at that pace. So in that case, if it only took you about, what, you know, 11 seconds to walk 164 feet, you're walking at about 10 miles an hour, which is pretty fast. That'd be more like a run. Um, and so that's how that works. And as the time goes on, you can see that your speed decreases. If it's taking you a whole minute to walk 164 feet, then you're walking only at about, you know, 1.9 miles per hour. Now on the little compass that's provided with the Master Series, what we have is just a pretty nice, decent compass. I've tested it, it, it you know, it works. Um, I've actually had it underwater, and it's it, it it's sealed because well it has water inside anyway. It's probably oil, um, and it, and I haven't had any problems. And it actually hasn't scratched, even though it's plastic, and I've treated them the same. It hasn't scratched at all, almost maybe just tiny little scratches there. And it looks very nice with this watch and with the strap when I put it on. Um, this 
downside, like I was talking about with the land series, having the hardened mineral crystal. Uh, Vlad has been really abusing this watch. He's, you know, had it working on cars, had it on, uh, you know, cooking near a flame. It got hot one time. Um, and, and it's held up quite well, as you can see from a distance. But if you look closely, there are quite a few scratches on the, the crystal. And it might be hard to see, which is good that it's hard to see. But uh, if you really look closely, you can obviously see them, as opposed to when you look here, there's really, I could not find even one scratch. Um, and I've been wearing it more than Vlad. So that's definitely a downside of this one here. These great watches, um, just make sure you're okay with the price. And like I said, three things that we would have liked to see on them is a, a sapphire crystal on this one, um, automatic if possible, and then better straps. Uh, although I will say these straps are extremely inexpensive. I think they're about 10 to $20, you know, and you can get multiple different ones and you can really style it up and change it up every day if you want. And honestly, guys, you know, the other reason that uh, you're going to be paying a lot, little bit more for these watches is just because of the Bear Grylls name on the back and the collaboration and all of that. Um, that definitely just adds a little bit of a, you know, brand name kind of uh, price tag, price boost. But otherwise, if, uh, if you like how they look, if you like the functionality, you know, make your own decisions, go to the website. I'll have links down in the description. I will have the specs of both of them down in the description. Do check that out. I might have missed something, and if you're interested, I should have it down there for you. Please let me know in the comments what you guys think. Ask any questions, and I'll try to get back to you. Thank you for watching the video, and don't forget to praise God. And thank you guys for supporting our channel and our business. It's been Eugene, and I'll see you in the next video.